Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for each and every day. We celebrate uh, Mom's Day today, Lord, and uh, pray that your message will touch the hearts of those who are here today so that they may come to a better understanding of the love that you have for them through our, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father, be with us today. God, and direct all things. I want to lift up Deborah to you, Lord, because she is uh, having issues, and also Margot. Uh, we didn't uh, mention them earlier, so I want to mention them by name, Lord. They're our sisters and your children, and they need, uh, they need your healing hand to touch them right now. Father, we give you thanks, praise, and glory, and honor in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks, guys. Y'all go ahead and let's be dismissed for the kiddos, I mean, uh, for the children's church. And while they're leaving, I want to give you uh, uh, just a couple of announcements that I need to uh, do. We need to do an audit next week, so uh, if you're a member of our congregation and you would like to help with our audit next uh, Sunday after church, please raise your hand so Edie can get your name, please. Miss Colleen, Miss Laurie, I think Miss Terry wants to do it. Is you sure, Margot? Okay, well, there, there's your four. You good? <laughs> okay, so Lori, Margo, Colleen, and uh, Terry. I forgot who it was. <laughs> yeah, that's my wife. <laughs> I better not forget that one, right? Okay. Uh, now, ladies, did uh, everybody get a, a, a flyer back there, a rose this morning? Okay, good, good, good. Uh, if uh, you've got somebody at home or whatever, uh, you know, take one with you whenever you go. I don't want the kids to just grab them and, and do whatever they want to with them. So uh, if you need to take one home to your wife to get on her better half, you just go right ahead. Uh, I'm going to have to buy mine a whole dozen of them. But uh, anyway, um, we're going to be, I want you to turn to chapters 1 and chapter 2 of Luke. Uh, now, we know through Scripture that uh, our example, as men and women, as men and women and children of God, we know through Scripture our example is Christ. Our example is always Christ. Always, always, always. He is who we are to look towards for comparison into judging ourselves and where we're at in our walk with Christ in order to improve our daily walk with Christ. Now, today... Today, I want to use a lady of the Bible, and God put this on my heart at the first of the week to use this lady, but I didn't know what he was going to give me until this morning, but uh, he put uh, the mother of Jesus as the example of ladies to represent or to follow through, through, the, uh, through their life. Uh, he gave me the mother of Christ, and so we're going to look at Luke 2. Uh, at the life, not, not necessarily the life, but at the encounter that Mary had with Christ, which gave her her purpose in life. It gave her her purpose in life. And so in looking at this life, if you will, you will see as a woman of God, you will see your purpose in life. Now, we're going to cover a lot of things. Uh, and a lot of scripture in, uh, in chapter 1, we're going to go on a verse-by-verse -verse venture. And then when we get over into chapter 2, I'm just going to share and paraphrase some verses there just to, to bring it to a closing, if you will. So, <clears throat> if you'll turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, we'll get started in about 30 minutes, okay? Is that all right? <laughs> okay. No, we'll get started in just a few minutes. But last week, <clears throat> excuse me, last week I shared with you about miracles. Remember that? We talked about the butterfly that lit on my hand, went down the road with me, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we talked about the movie, uh, Miracles in Heaven, I think is the name of it. That was a great movie, on and on and on. Uh, and and the, in that movie, uh, uh, Jennifer Gardner at the end of that movie, which it just, it really, really had an impact on me. She said, look at the small miracles of life. Now, she said that because if we recognize the small miracles that God does in our lives, 
then the big miracles, if you will, that he does in our lives are all that much more enormous. Okay, we can see the glory of God through the miracles of the things that he does in our lives. <clears throat> and so uh, we, we, need to, we need to take time to look at these small miracles because they're everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Today is Mother's Day. We honor all, all moms here and others throughout heaven and the earth. My mom is in heaven, and so I still honor her. And a lot of your moms, I'm sure, are in heaven, so you still honor them. <clears throat> so I say to you, ladies, and today's teaching is primarily pointed to you ladies. Though, guys, I think we can, if we, if we want to took it into the male uh uh, scenario, if you will, we can kind of see the same thing. The, the teaching would be good for us today, uh, us as well. But I want to say to all you moms today, happy blessed Mother's Day. Happy blessed Mother's Day. Man, I'm so thankful that y'all exist, because if you didn't, we wouldn't be here. I say blessed because you are blessed. You are chosen by God. Ladies, you are chosen by God to carry, to care for, to encourage, to nurture, and to give life itself to mankind. What well, you... God would not bless, he would not, he would not choose guys to do that. I guarantee you, because there'd be one and then there'd be no more. But you ladies just can't continue doing it. You have one, then it's like, hey, let's do it again. Terry still tells me today, oh, I wish I'd had a whole, whole, whole bunch more. I said, no, we don't, we don't, we don't need any more. Then she'll come back, she says, well, what about adoption and stuff? I said, no, 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 no. We got grandkids. They come and they go, and that's good, you know. But you ladies, and, and you know what I'm talking about. You have one child, and then, you know, if you're able to, then you, yeah. I mean, right there in the same bed, just as it all happens, it's like, okay, let's do it again. Jeez, guys, we don't understand that. There's no way we could even conceive doing that again, right? But you ladies, it's just the miracle of God working through your life. You have one, and then you're ready to have more. Now, when we look at Mary, we know that she had one. Of course, that was Christ. And we're going to talk about that birth. Now, in the Christmas season, we talk about the birth of Christ all the time, right? Uh, we use this as various scriptures in order to talk about the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. But today, when we look at those same scriptures, I want to look at the mother of Christ as opposed to the birth of Christ. Not trying to take away from the birth of our Savior, because that is the most important birth throughout eternity. But I want to look at Mary. Mary. We'll, we'll talk about the, the birth of Jesus again, or you can read it over in, in Matthew two, 2, or you can read it here in Luke 1 and Luke 2, uh, you know, if you want to look at the birth of Christ. But today, let's just talk about Mary. Okay? Not to take anything away from the magnificent, miracle, miraculous birth of our Lord and Savior. I know that there are many, many, many thousands of ladies that God has for his purpose kept from bearing children, which I'll discuss a little bit more later on. Uh, I know of many, many thousands of ladies throughout the world who have lost children. And these are some of the things that we don't understand. But we must understand that Jesus tells us that there is suffering throughout life, not just for ladies, but also for us. And so these, this is life. Life happens. My mom, she had three babies. Two of them never made it to being born alive. And the third one was born and lived for nine days, and then she went to heaven. 
And that's out of, and then she did have five others. Thank goodness I made it. If I'd have been in heaven, it'd have been even better, but I didn't, so. But we must understand that life is what life is. And in life, there's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of hurt. But there's also lots of miracles. Lots of, look at yourself in the mirror sometime. You are a miracle. You are. Brent, you're really a miracle. Okay? But we are. We are really, truly miracles. I mean, if you look at, at us, you know you've never seen yourself, right? You've never looked at yourself. Now, you've seen the image of you when you look in the mirror, but you've never seen you. I can see Rusty. I can see Johnny. I can see Brenda. I can see all the I see you, but you've never seen you. You've only seen an image of you because you can't take your eyeballs out and turn them around. But God has seen you, and he knew you from the very beginning of creation. Of creation. He knew when you were going to be born. He knew that he was going to bring your mother and your father's seed together to form you, to create you, to make that miracle happen in that mother's womb. When we truly see and experience the birth of a child, it is truly a miracle. I saw two of my children born in the, in the birthing room or whatever you call it, maternity room or whatever it is. Actually, it was an operating room is what it was. But I saw two of my kids born. It was right there. Doctor had to tell me to get out of the way of one of them. He says, you need to move over. Because I was just so enthralled. That's my baby coming out of there. And when she came out, it was like, here you go, Dad. I, I was the first to hold uh, my youngest one. And he said, here you go, Dad. I just, wow. What a miracle. Now she's an honorary critter, but no, she, no, she's not. But it was a true miracle to see because I'd gone through the nine months with her, with the mom. I knew how the stuff she went through. Yes, I don't, didn't experience it like she did. But I suffered. Because it was all my fault. But when that baby was born, when that baby was born, it was like all that was gone. It was all gone. And then the mom said, I'll do it again. What? Guys, we don't get that. Moms, you understand. But it is truly a miracle when God will bring together the man's seed and the woman's seed and create another human being made in the image of him. Not in the image of you. You are made in the image of God. This baby that is born is made in the image of God. Not you. God just used you. In order to create what he wanted to be created. And in the scripture, there are many, many stories of mothers shared. Some barren, some with many births. But starting with Eve, there is absolutely no one ever, ever born without a mother. God chose from the very beginning of time to use the woman as the birthing vessel, if you will, for all of humanity. God entrusts you. He didn't entrust us. He entrusts you. What a blessing. Again, during our Christmas message, we talk about the, uh, the birth of Christ here in Luke 1, in uh, verse 26, is where we're going to start today. But today, I want to talk and speak about the mother of Christ. The mother of Christ. As we honor moms, I think, also, all of the Christian world honors Mary the mother of Jesus. All of the Christian world that truly believe 
in the birth, the virgin birth of the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus. All of the Christian world honors Mary. However, some religions exalt Mary. Some religions exalt Mary equally or even above Christ. For if not for her, Christ would have never come. Well, that's true because no person is ever born without a mother. And so therefore, some religions will honor Mary even above Christ. Because if it hadn't have been for Mary, Christ wouldn't have been here. That is not true. Thus salvation would not have come. She is considered as a co-matrix to salvation. In other words, it is because of her and because of Christ that salvation comes. Without her, Jesus would not have been born, so therefore salvation would not have come. So some religions honor her to the point of exalting her above Christ. However, this is a false teaching. Because Scripture does not support Mary in any way, shape, form, or fashion, being exalted or being elevated above our Lord and Savior. Why? Because salvation comes from one name and one name only. Acts 4, 10 through 12, you can read that no one is to be saved by any other name other than Jesus. So Jesus is the only salvation. He is the only Savior. Mary only was a vessel that to bring our salvation to fruition through the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the begotten Son of God. That means Jesus came from God. That's what begotten means. He came from God himself. Yes, God used Mary as the vessel. But Jesus came from God. She, like other mothers, humbly accepted the burdens of pregnancy with its unknown pain, disfiguration, and sufferings, hoping for the best outcome. When, when women tell us, or at least mine did, when women tell us husbands, yes, I want to have a child, they know what they're looking forward to because the older ladies have showed them and told them through time. Us guys just say, whatever you want, dear, as long as you're happy. But none of us know, none of us know what the outcome is going to be. But yet we move forward in having these children. But God simply chose Mary to use her as the vessel. He could have chosen another lady. He could have chosen Elizabeth, which we're going to talk about in just a second, who is her aunt. But he had a special purpose for her. Every child, every pregnancy that a woman goes through, God has a purpose for that pregnancy. He created that person in that woman's womb for his good pleasure. That's what Scripture teaches us. It is not because of her greatness it is because of his greatness that he chose the most simplest of maidservants. He chose the simplest woman, I think, that he could probably find at the time that was willing to accept whatever he bestowed on her. She was willing to accept it in perfect obedience. And that's exactly what she did. A simple maidservant. In the New Testament, it speaks of seven, God's special number, his number of completeness. It speaks of seven Marys. There's seven Marys in the New Testament. Just so that you know. Don't be confused with all the other Marys. If you want to know who they are, just look them up in, in your scriptures, look them up in the encyclopedias, whatever. But I don't want you to ever be confused with any other Mary. 
Today we are concentrating on the virgin birth, the mother of Jesus. So we're going to start at verse 26. Now we need to understand a little bit before 26. We need to understand, look over at verse 24. Now after those days, his wife, Zacharias' wife, Elizabeth, who is Mary's aunt, conceived and hid herself for five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when I looked when he looked on me, taking away my reproach among people. In other words, Elizabeth had been barren for many, 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 many years. And she prayed, and she wanted to have a child. And we know through the teaching of the scriptures that Elizabeth, Zachariah's wife, he was a priest in the, uh, in the, uh, in the synagogues, she became pregnant by a miracle of God in her older age, I'm going to say, and she was pregnant with John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who is a cousin of Christ. He was a cousin of Christ. And God had a specific mission or ministry for John the Baptist. He had a specific ministry or mission for Christ. He has a separate uh, ministry or mission for you and a separate one for me not all of us are called to do the exact same thing but we are all called for his good pleasure in verse 26 it says now the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth in this we understand God's messenger angel which is Gabriel Sent by God in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Mary's aunt, which is up in Luke 1, you can read the whole story at Luke 1, 1 through 25. Gabriel came to the small community of Nazareth, the small community of Nazareth. Now we know Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which is a separate place than Nazareth. Nazareth is up here, Jerusalem is down here. And Bethlehem is right up about a mile or so from Jerusalem. But because they originated, if you will, to Nazareth, and after they come back from Egypt, which we're not going to go into all of that, but after they came back from Egypt, they went back and settled in Nazareth. So therefore, Jesus, sometimes you will see him referred to as the Nazarene, or Jesus of Nazareth, and this is the reason for it. Verse 27, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. To Mary, a maidservant, about 13 years old, that was customary at that time, all right, who in this culture is promised to marry Joseph, who is probably anywhere from the age of 17 to 20 some people say he's a lot older. I truly believe that he was just a, an older teenager. And uh, she is betrothed to be married to him whenever they are to be married. Uh, they're engaged, if you will. Both of these, both Mary and Joseph, are from the lineage of King David, which is very, very important. Because we see over in God's Abrahamic covenant, in chapters in Genesis chapter 12, 15, and 22, and others, that God makes a pledge to Abraham, the first covenant God makes with man, saying, I will bless you. I will bless you and make you the father of many nations, etc., etc. And, and he tells him in one of the scriptures, he says, And you're in your house, which you have the lineage of David. King David is also from Abraham. In your house, it will uh, be a kingdom forever and ever and ever. You can see this in the genealogy, which is in chapter 3 of Luke and chapter 1 of, of, Gen of, uh, of Matthew. You can look through the genealogy. You'll find King David. You'll also find Solomon, who was the, uh, the grandfather, great-great-great-grandfather, whatever, of Joseph. Over in Matthew or Luke 3, you'll see the genealogy of Christ, and you go to King David, then you'll see Nathan. Nathan was the great-great-great-grandfather of Mary. So both of them are from the, from the, the uh, Abraham, of course, and also from King David which is very important because the Abrahamic covenant states that your kingdom shall, uh, the seed w shall rule forever in your kingdom, which I shall give you. 
So, in verse 28, it says, And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. Now, if you want to compare yourself, blessed are you. Blessed are you. Because you're a woman. Not among women, but because you're a woman. God has, 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 has trusted you with the giving of life. Again, God chose Mary, not because of her greatness, but because of her humbleness before the Lord and her readiness and her faithfulness of obedient service. She was just a simple little 13-year-old girl. Don't you know that this just scared her to death? Or I would think it would. However, God has a way of taking care of that. Further, the Lord God chose her to bless to bless the totality of mankind with her baby. Through her, through this 13-year-old, we're going to say, maidservant girl, the entire human race is blessed. Now, you may say, well, that's because she gave birth to Jesus. Well, believe me, Rodney is a blessing in my life. Mountain time here, Rich, he is a blessing in my life and a blessing in many other lives. All of you are blessings in my life. I hope I'm a blessing in your life. And this is what God does. He takes those he creates to bless the rest of the world. Our little church right here goes out all over the world. We have people in other nations we have a lady right now over in Australia that gets up at 2 or 3 in the morning or whatever time it is and goes to church with us. You can be a blessing throughout the entire world, and God created you for that. The same way he created Jesus. Yes, you're not Jesus, and you never will be Jesus. There's only one. But you are still created to bless the world. Not just your family, certainly not just you, and not just myself. We're here to bless one another. It's the same thing that God did with Christ. He gave Mary the opportunity to have the blessing of the entire world. The entire world. Verse 29. But when she saw him, she was troubled. Well, no doubt. How would you, how would you think if you were sitting there one, one day and sweeping your floor or washing dishes or whatever she happened to be doing, and all of a sudden, God's angel appeared and said, Hey, Mary! And all this glowing around him. I don't know if he had wings or not or whatever. I have no idea. It doesn't tell us what form he is. But wouldn't it be, I mean, you know, they didn't have doors, but the curtain was shut. And then all of a sudden, this guy's standing there. Hey, Mary, what's up? I know it scared me half to death. Well, here's a 13-year-old girl that's experiencing this. Do you think it wouldn't scare her? Well, sure it would. Sure it would. She, it says that she was greatly troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. What? What, what are you? Are you kidding me? Did I skip verse 28? Yes, I did, I think. I did. I'm sorry. So let me back up for a second. Verse 28. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. Again, no, I didn't. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed are you among women. Highly favored one. That means God has appointed you for a specific reason, which is to bring in our Savior, of course. But he, ladies, he's appointed you to do the same thing. To whoever you birth throughout your life or however many you were able to birth, you're blessed by God. You're highly favored by God. Verse 29, And when he, she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting is this. What manner of greeting is this? What are you talking about? As a simple 13-year-old, this not only would have frightened her and, dis and was very disturbing, but also very confusing. 
She would have been aware of God, the message of the coming of the Savior, the Messiah, and God's Spirit, for she would have been taught or overheard the teachings of Moses' Bible, which is the first five books of Scripture, which is the Pentateuch. But to the, be visited by an angel, would, she would not have understood, because that is not a teaching of the Old Testament, not to a maidservant. And to hear his words of praise for a mere maidservant, this just couldn't be. In the Old Testament, when the angel of the Lord appeared, or when an angel appeared, it was all, always to the mighty men of God. Those who conversed with God and talked with God and walked with God. Not a maidservant, not a simple maidservant. But yet here's God's angel talking to this maidservant. 13-year-old girl. In verse 30 and 31, it says, Then the angel of the Lord said to her, Do not be afraid. Throughout Scripture, when Jesus appears to his disciples or to other people he would always say fear not do not be afraid uh, peace be with you on and on and on and on so when this angel of the lord gabriel came and did just that exact same thing the the peace that surpasses understanding had to have overtaken her to where she realized well i'm not in danger i, I don't understand this but i don't have to worry about it i'm safe i'm good Instead of being greatly troubled by it. In verse 31 it says, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. The angel of the Lord came to her and said, Look, you have been chosen, you highly favored one, and you shall bring forth the Savior of the world. Jesus. Jesus means the Lord Jesus saves and she is instructed and Joseph is also instructed over in the book of Matthew that you shall give him the name Jesus for the Lord saves Gabriel as with Christ when a supernatural miracle of God is about to happen he proclaims in an announcement of peace God's peace is given then the foretelling of God's plan and instructions is given to Mary. You shall have a son. And he shall be called Jesus. Now again, put your place, put yourself in the place of this 13-year-old girl. She's sitting there wondering, what in the world is going on here? Where's my dad? Where's my mom? Where's, where's my master? Where's my whatever? Why is some, there somebody here to help me out with this? And the peace of God comes over her. It's the same way like whenever we start going through troubles. In troubling times. We can look to God and God will send his messenger angel to give us peace in our hearts, peace in our souls. So that we know that God's got it. I say this all the time and many of you do as well. I don't have to worry about it because God's got it. I don't have to worry about it because God's got it. Because I trust fully in him. I know that God is going to take care of whatever comes my way. I know that I'm going to get through it. I know I don't understand it. Just like Mary didn't. I can't foresee the end. But I know that God is going to get me through it. Because he's gotten me through so many things other issues and that builds our faith and that builds our trust when you sit back and you look and you think about what all God has gotten you through already it builds your faith why would you why and I don't know why we do it but we do a little trouble comes along oh God I don't know if you can handle this oh God are you going to get me out of this oh God am I going to make it through this well if he's taking care of you for, I don't know, 67 years. Don't you think he's going to take care of you the rest of your, was it uh, 53 years? I'm going to live to be 120, so that's another 53 years i got to go. Which is fine. Why? Because God's got it. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. But this is a young little girl who knows nothing. 
Now, verse 32 here, which we're going to go over, and I'm going to read it in just a second. It says, verse 32 and 33, God explains the reason for his purpose. He explains the reason for his purpose, which is always to bring glory to his name. Glory to his name by fulfilling his promise, which he is doing by fulfilling the covenant that he made or the promise he made with Abraham. Because we have a faithful God. If God promises you that he's going to get you through the storms, guess what? He's going to get you through the storms. Doesn't mean you're not going to get bumped and bruised, but you're going to get through them. So why do we stress and actually sh shorten our lives with the stress and the, and the worry? You know, worry is like a rocking chair. You just go back and forth, but you never get anywhere. You never get anywhere with it. So why worry about it? Jesus tells us, he says, do not worry about tomorrow, for today shall have troubles of its own, and tomorrow will have more. But I've overcome the world, so why are you worried? Why are you stressing? You can live in peace. You can live in peace. Linda Moya will tell you in a heartbeat, I don't worry about nothing. She might not talk like that, but I do. And I don't worry about nothing either. Why? Because God's got it. But now verse 32 is very, very important for us to understand. Verse 32, there are six statements that are given by Gabriel to Mary to tell her of the deity of the child that she is fixing to bear. Six statements. And these six statements of deity are directed at the humanity of Christ. But when we get to 33 we will see that he is also fully God. It is stating that he is fully man, touched by God, but he is also fully God, which touches man. So, and I'm going to give them to you, all, all of them, uh, by number, if you will. So the number one is in verse 31, which is his name is Jesus. The Lord saves. That's the first one. He is Jesus, the Lord saves. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the promised one. He is the anointed one. In verse 32, he will be great. This is God's promise to Mary her, that her child will be great. He'll be great among men because he will be fully man. And he will be great among men. The third one is that he will be called Son of the Most Highest. Son of the Most Highest, which would be El Elyon. El Elyon. It's E-L, which means the, and then Elyon, which is E-L-I-O-N, which is the highest. When we see in Scripture, when we say God, the, uh, to the glory of God Most High, it is referring to God's name of El Elyon. And so he will be the son of El Elyon, God the Father, the Most High God. Four, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father David. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David. This is the promise that was made to Abraham. This is a promise that is made throughout uh, Scripture. It is a promise given to David that your kingdom shall live forever your kingdom shall live forever and so the throne of david which we know jesus is from david because he is from joseph and not from joseph but he is from mary who is from king david and in just in case somebody says oh well well what about joseph well he is also from king david Verse 33, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. That's number five. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Now, if you go back into the story, you will see that Jacob, this is the guy that wrestled with Christ, the incarnate Jesus. Jacob's name was changed 
to Israel. His name was changed to Israel. This is Esau and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And from Israel came the 12 tribes of Israel. So Jacob, when it's referred to in Scripture, is Israel. So when it says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob, he is saying that he shall reign over the people of Israel forever and ever and ever. Now, you think Hamas or Iran or Syria or Iraq or any other country whatsoever is going to annihilate God's people completely? It ain't happening. It is, it, people have tried to do it throughout history. It will not happen. Israel, they will always be a remnant of Israel. Israel will survive forever because they are God's chosen people. So why are these guys trying to attack? Why are our idiot students, I say that insultingly, I hope, our idiot, stu our idiot students who are paying thousands of dollars, actually I guess their parents are paying thousands of dollars to send them to college, are up there, Say it again. Yeah, or we're paying it. Yeah, don't get me going there. Forgive the uh, student loans? I don't think so. Okay. Okay, you, you threw me off track. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. You're right. But the, these people, these students who are up there saying, uh, do away with Israel, annihilate Israel, uh, kill all of Israel, on and on and on. I mean, all they need to do is read the scriptures and find out it will never happen. It cannot happen. These are God's chosen people. Now, if God didn't exist, then maybe it would happen. But you know what? If God didn't exist, neither would we. So God does exist. And since God does exist, and since God created all things that are created, John 1, and he says in his word, Israel will not be annihilated, there will always be a remnant, then guess what? There will always be a remnant. You will not destroy them. Many, many, many countries have tried it throughout history. It has never happened. It has never happened and it never will happen. So these people are just beating their head against a stone, which I wish they would do. It'd probably knock some sense in them. But God says in his word, and he will reign over the house of Israel, or, or the house of Jacob forever, which is Israel. Israel will always be here. All right, and the sixth one, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Of his kingdom, of this man Jesus, of his kingdom there shall be no end. And there will not be an end. As a matter of fact, the kingdom is going to go for eternity. So it is going to last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Just like God has been forever and ever and ever and ever. There has never not been God. There has never not been Christ. There has never not been the Holy Spirit. Then, of course, we say, well, where do they come from? God made himself. If God was ever made, he would have had to have made himself. But if you think about it, and I, this kind of dawned on me the other day, because, you know, everybody, these smart people, I'm going to say, they say, well, the world just exploded from nothing and became what it is. Well, nothing can never be something. Nothing is always nothing. You cannot get something from nothing. So something had to make that that was nothing into something. And that would be God. In verse 34, then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? How can this, I'm not going to have a baby. I, you know, I'm thinking in human nature here, you know. I'm thinking in, in humanity here. How in the world can I have a baby? I've never known a man, which, of course, simply means she's never had uh, sexual relations with a man because she's a virgin. She's 13 years old. How can this be, God? I don't understand it. Well, it's because it's a miracle birth. It's a miraculously more miracle birth. It is something that God does because he wants to do it. The same way he spoke the world to an existence, something 
that came from nothing because he spoke it into something. Because this is who God is. He is all powerful. You think God can't take care of your little issues and problems? Sure he can. Now, does he choose to? I don't know. That's between you and him, I think. Are you humble enough? Are you obedient? Have you, have you um, uh, surrendered yourself to service to him, to glorify him? You know, I don't know. It's your relationship with God, not mine, not your husband's, not your wife's. It's your relationship with God. Where is that relationship? This is why we use Jesus as the example. We look at Jesus and his relationship with the Father. You realize over in John 2, whenever uh, uh, Mary tells Jesus, he says, uh, I want you to go over there. I'm going to paraphrase this real quick. Go over there and, and take that water and turn it into wine, Jesus, because these people are out of wine. We can't have the party. There ain't no wine. So turn it into wine. And he said, woman, do you not know that it is not my time but yet I will do what you say to do. Why did he say woman? It's because Jesus came to a point in his life to where he, had, he no longer, he no longer, if he'd have said mother, he would have still had that submissive relationship to his mom. Jesus at some point in his life had to turn from his relationship to his mother and say, I do only as the father says. Because he had to end that human, humanity relationship with his mother in order to be obedient to the father. Not that he was disrespectful to his mother whatsoever. But he had to relinquish that submissiveness to his mother. Although if you read through the story, he did exactly what his mother said do. He was obedient to her as well. But he had to distinguish himself from being the son of man to being the son of God. He could no longer consider himself the son of man. He had to fulfill his ministry, his mission, which is to be the son of God. So therefore, he had to break the chain. How many mothers are here whose children have broke the chain? More than once. But they always seem to come back, right? Well, Jesus came back at one moment. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, he loved his mother. He loved his mother. Although he had tried and did separate himself from his submissiveness to his mother throughout his ministry. But while he hung on that cross, he looked down and he said, Mother, behold your son. John. Behold your mother. So because of the love that he had for his mother, he turned him over to his best friend, the one that Jesus loved. Why? Because he loved his mom. My mom's been gone I don't know how many years, but I love my mom. Three, four years, whatever it's been, five, I don't know. But I still love my mom, and I miss my mom. And I will forever love my mom. Jesus loved Mary. But he had to do as the Father directed him to do. Which is to separate himself for a period of time. So that the world could see that he is the son of the most high. The son of God. In verse 31, proclaims, this is Jesus. You shall name him Jesus. You shall call him Jesus. The Lord saves. There is salvation in that name and no other name. Verse 35. Then the angel answered and said to her, the Holy, ooh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest. This is the power of the most high. This is the power of El Elyon. This is the power of God himself. Father God. 
will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One. Now he is becoming the Son of God. Before, on the six things that we looked at here, the six statements of deity, he was that in the Son of Man. But now God himself is saying, the Holy One. who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. The Son of God. So Jesus has to distinguish himself from being the obedient son to Mary to being the obedient son to God, to Holy God. It's the same way that we have to do. At some point in time, we have to try to put our humanity aside and try to become the obedient sons and daughters of God. And mothers and fathers, you have to accept this. Jesus says those who put their mothers, their brothers, their sisters, their aunts, their uncles, etc. before me do not deserve me at all. God has to be first in your life. He has to be first in my life. God will impregnate. God did impregnate this virgin for his glory. For here again is the seventh statement. But it changes it from being fully man to being fully God. To being fully God. Verse 36. Verse 36 and 37. Now indeed, Elizabeth, our relative, your relative, her relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is in the sixth month, for her who was called barren. For God, for with God, nothing is impossible. I don't know if you need to underline that, highlight that, or whatever, but you need to remember that simple little verse. For God, with God, nothing is impossible. With God, nothing is impossible. Without God, guess what? There's some impossibilities. Here's a simple one. You ain't going to heaven without God. How simple can that be? You want to get to heaven? You got to have God. Not a God, but the God. The God most high. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The angel departed from her. Here Mary shares with us her inner commitment to God. Her humility and her readiness for faithful, obedient service as God has revealed it to her. This is where we need to become or where we need to Uh, At some point in time in our life, we need to come to a point to where we say, Lord, I am ready to serve you. No matter what it is, no matter how it works, no matter the outcome, no matter the struggles, no matter the trials, no matter the tribulations, no matter the pain, no matter the suffering, no matter what, I am here to serve you. This has to be your proclamation to God because God doesn't take second second, uh, fiddle to anything. Matter of fact, his very first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. If you put the rangers, even the rangers, if you put the Texas rangers above God, then you're, (laughs) shame on you. I didn't say you couldn't put them before your wife. No, I didn't say that. Not at all. You know I'm teasing with that. But my point is, is that you cannot have anything before God. God has to be first in your life. And you have to have an unbridled commitment to him. No matter what it is that he is calling you to do, you have to do it. If you're going to be the obedient service uh, servant of God, you have to be ready to go through some troubles. Jesus says, If they persecute me, him, they will also persecute you. So he warns us ahead of time. Guess what? It ain't going to be easy. But you can do it. Now, verse 39 through 45, I'm going to read through those real quick and then just give you a a quick scenario of it. 
<clears throat> but it's very important that we understand what's going on here. Now Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste. She hurried along to the city of, of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Whenever you introduce Christ to someone and they truly receive Christ, then, man, the Holy Spirit just comes over you. And this is exactly what happened to Elizabeth. Now, the baby that was in her womb happened to be John the Baptist. Her being Mary's aunt, therefore John the Baptist is the cousin of Christ. <clears throat> Verse 42, Then she spoke with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me? that the mother of the Lord should come to me. Elizabeth thought herself very unworthy. How many of us think that we're unworthy of God's presence? Amen. But you're not. You're not. It doesn't matter if you're a maidservant or if you're wife of the president, I guess you'd say. Or maybe someday I'm sure there's going to be a female president. Certainly not the one that's standing second in line now. Did I say that? Well, I'll say it again if I need to. If you didn't catch it. Verse 44. For indeed, as soon as your voice, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed. For there will be a fulfillment for those things which were told her from the Lord. There will be a fulfillment. Mary visits Elizabeth, seeking comfort. Now, this is where we need to understand, young ladies. Mary visited Elizabeth, her older aunt, seeking comfort, advice, and encouragement from an elder woman, her aunt, of faith in which Elizabeth poured out to her. If you have an issue, and this is ladies should go to ladies, men should go to men. And it's, it's told in Scripture this way. We're going to see it again over in the book of Titus. You don't have to go there, but I can, I'll just share it with you. Ladies, if you have issues with things in life, then you go to a lady who has lived it. You go to a godly lady who has lived it. Guys, you have an issue in life, you go to a godly man who has lived, lived it. This is what we do. They will help us. They will comfort us. They will instruct us. They will guide us and direct us. And if they are a godly person, they'll pray, for, pray with us and for us. Over in verse uh, Titus, verse 2, or chapter 2, I'm sorry, verse 3 through 5, Paul writes that the elder who are faithful, the elder who are faithful to the Lord, are to teach the younger, not necessarily younger in years now, but younger in walk with the, with the Lord, to serve God by bringing up godly women. To serve God by bringing up godly women. We have an AHG program, okay, which is our American Heritage Girl. That program, as well as our Trail Life program, is set up on the AHG for godly women to bring up godly girls into godly women. Trail Life is set up and established to bring godly men to children, godly boys, and bring them up and make them into godly men. This is how it works. This is the, the, the model, if you will, that we should follow. I noticed this last week, Boy Scouts of America, which I was a scoutmaster for six years. They changed their name. They are no longer Boy Scouts. They are just Scouts of America. Why? Because they have intermixed the two genders. The two genders, by the way, there's not three, four, five, or six. The two genders, they have inter intermingled them in order to keep everybody happy. The, um, it's not the boss, but the, the founder, I think it is, of 
Trail Life put out a statement when America, when uh, the Boy Scouts did this and said, this is not the model we will ever change to because this is the model that we have to distinguish. God distinguishes male and female. He made them. There is a difference between boys. There is a difference between girls. There's a difference between men. There's a difference between women. And at times, women need to mentor to women. Men need to mentor to men. And boys and to boy, uh, men to boys and, and women to girls. Not intermingle. This is God's way. This is God's plan. And we need to follow it. And if we would, we would not have the issues that we have today. So Mary, being young in the ways of God, sought out the wiser to help her understand the best way to bring glory to God. The best way to bring glory to God. Verse 46 through 45. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I wish you would read it, okay? This is Mary's song of praise to God for doing what he has done in her life. She gives God praise and honor. Now, I'm going to read the first uh, three stanzas, I think it is. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced. In God my Savior, in God my Savior, that would be her son. That would be her son. We do a song at Christmas. Mary, do you realize... Uh, oh, I just dropped it. Um... Mary, did you know that, no, I just, it's is um, no, that's not it, hang on, um, oh, here it is, here it is, I, thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit gave it to me, it says, Mary, did you know that the baby you delivered will soon deliver you, remember that? The baby that you delivered will soon deliver you. What a praise of recognizing what God has done in this young woman's life. She gives God praise for the Savior that she gave birth to. Verse 48. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. Ladies, you are blessed. Now, you didn't give birth to Jesus. We know that. There's only one. But you did give birth to God's miracle. You did. Probably more than once. Probably more than once. Now, I know some of you are thinking some thoughts, but I'm going to share something else with you here in just a second that'll ease those thoughts. You can read in chapter 2 of the birth of Christ, but I would look for, or I would like for you to look at verse 25 and 35 here in chapter 2. 25 through 35 in chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he, was, he had seen the Lord Christ. The Lord's Christ. You see that? The Lord's Christ. That means the Christ. Most of, a lot of people say, oh, well, that's Jesus Christ. His last name is Christ, correct? No, he is the Christ. He is the anointed one, the chosen one by God. That's why it says right here, the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents had brought the child Jesus to do with him according to the custom of the ways, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, and light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Now, that scripture right there tells us God's plan is this, 
that there is Jew and Gentile. That's it. There is Jew and Gentile. That's it. Now, so many of us want to say, oh, no, there's black and white and yellow and red and pink and orange and whatever. There's all these other genders and all this stuff. No, no, no. God did not. And also, our denominations, our denominations, there's Baptist, Pentecostal, uh, uh, Episcopalian, Catholic, on and on and on and on. The whole gamut, okay, of all these religions. There's like 200 and some odd. I don't even know how many there are. No, God created one, two, two genders, if you will, or two genders, but also two um, states of men, I'm going to say. There's Jew and there's Gentile. Either you're a Jew or you're a Gentile. Either you're God's chosen people or you're God's elected people, if you're a Christian, or you're a non-believer. There's either Jew and Gentile. That's it. There are no denominations. That's why we do not have a denomination in this particular church. Because there is only one group of people that we recognize here, and that's the Gentiles. Unless some of you are true Jews, then we'll recognize you. And God says, Simeon says, that God will bless the Jew and the Gentiles that believe. He doesn't say that he's going to bless the ones of Church of Christ. He doesn't say he's going to bless the Episcopalians. He didn't say he's going to bless the Catholics. He didn't say he's going to bless the Baptists. It's not what he said. He says, I'll bless those who bless me. Bless him, of course. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things in which he had spoken. Can you imagine Mary sending there holding her? He, she, he, she's about 14 now, and this baby's eight days old, according to the custom. He's eight days old. Jesus is eight days old. And she is marveling at what is being said over her baby. Whenever you had, ladies, when you had your babies, when you first, I I kind of shared this a while ago, when you first took that baby in your arms, there's nothing, nothing whatsoever took your mind from anything except glory and beauty and honor and, and, and goodness for this child that you just brought into the world. You never thought that this child would become an addict. You never thought this child would have problems. You never thought this child, like my daughter, my sister's uh, daughter, be caught in a car wreck and killed at 18. You never thought all the horrible things in life. You only thought good stuff. Matter of fact, you thought great things. Wow, this baby's going to change the world. Mary thought the exact same thing, and her baby did change the world. And some of our babies can change the world too. Maybe your mother's baby is going to change the world. You ever think of that? Did you catch that? Maybe your mother's baby will change the world. I pray it so. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, This is a tough one to hold. Said to his mother, Behold, the child is destined for a fall and a rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now what Simeon was saying here, and you can kind of relate to this, I'm sure, Did all of our children grow up to be magnificent people? Well, they're magnificent in our eyes, yes. But, I mean, had they grown up to change the world? Well, I know my mom's, one of her children didn't. One of her children grew up to be a knothead to the umpth degree. And he's got a long way to go. But we never think that. We only think good things about our children. Why? Because we love them. Because we love them. And I'm sure all of your kids are just magnificent and perfectly made and everything is just peachy king. But I know in my kids' lives, there are issues. I want my children to do great things in their lives. My mother wanted her children to do great things in their lives. And some are doing some great things. 
but a lot of us still have a long way to go. When in reality we see their struggles, their trials, and every time they hurt, every time you look at your child and see their struggles and their trials and the pains that they're going through by doing life, mothers, you hurt twice as much. Because not only does it hurt your heart, but it hurts your very soul to see their struggles. And again, you just want to take them up and protect them, care for them, nurture them, and love them. Mothers, you have a, an enormous role to fulfill in our societies and in our families, in our lives, in our communities. And God has called you to do that because he can trust you to do it. Just as Mary, the mother of Jesus, suffered much pain, she even witnessed all the rejection from all the people he had tried to help and the ones he had come to save. Jesus says, I came to save the lost of Israel. And they rejected him. And she suffered this pain. She suffered the pain of watching her son die on the cross. The most horrible death that man could put on another man at the time. Now, did she have other children? Yes, she did. But this was one special child. Now, I know all your children are special. They are. Each one of them have their own special place in your heart that no one else can fulfill. And when that child is gone for whatever reason, whether it be in the physical or whether it just be in the emotional, there's only one person that can fulfill that hole that is in your heart, and that's Christ. And he will. He promises that he will. Mary, about 14 now, understands the pain that comes with motherhood from conception all the way through the life of a child, looking back at her own life. And Anna bears witness in chapter 2, verse 36 through 38. Chapter 2, verse 36 through 38. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess of the daughter of Phenal, however you say it, the tribe of Asher. <coughs> She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years before her virginity, from her virginity. And this woman, who was a widow, about 84 years old, when, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers day and night, and come in an instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Anna, who is a trusted woman of God, this is who looked at Christ, looked at Mary, and blessed them by recognizing Jesus as the Savior. Trusting God, committing your children to him, put your children in the hands of the one where nothing is impossible. Proverbs 22 tells us, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Ladies, you are the nurturer. You are the nurturer. You're the one that is going to bring that child up. Fathers, we discipline them. We correct them, etc., etc. We provide for them. But ladies, you are the nurturer because God trusts you at doing this. This is, I mean, we try to do it, but we're not as good at it as you are, and there's no way we can be. Why? Because that is God's blessing to you to give you and, and enable you to do just that. To be that nurturer, to be that encourager, to be that person that will bring that child up in godly ways. Many mothers fell at this. Many mothers fell at this. My mom, I, I, I use her because I can, because she's my mom. My mom had a very, very hard life. She worked three jobs. 
to raise five kids by herself. She did the best that she could with what she had. It wasn't the best life. We could have had a much better life. Terry and I compare our lives sometimes and <laughs> hers was a piece of cake. And she'll admit it. She had a good life. A really good life with loving parents. We were talking to one of the AHG girls the other night, or Terry was. The oldest one, I think she's 15, the oldest one that comes to AHG. This lady, by the way, I think the number 10 kid, she's in the hospital with this 10th kid. They have like nine children. Anyway, this young girl, she's 15, she went, her and Terry were talking, and she goes, you know what? I have such a good mom and a good dad and such a good life. I have parents who love me. I mean, this girl was recognizing the love that is in that home. We didn't have love in our home. Now, I say that because this is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way that God designed it. He designed that there be love in the home. There be nurturing. There be cherishing. There be warmth. There be comforting. There will be uh, uh, joy and happiness in a home. And this is what the woman brings to the household. This is your blessing in life that God has given you, the opportunity to make a happy home. Now, I know a lot of women say, oh, no, I'm going to work outside. I don't want, you know, uh, let him take home, uh, stay home. That's not how God has it planned. I, I mean, you can dispute it all you want to, but you got to talk to God about it because that's not God has, has it planned. Guys, we cannot do and we cannot fulfill the role of a mother. We can't. It's impossible. We don't have it. But ladies, you do have it. And if you don't feel as though you have it, then ask God and let him give it to you. And he will. Many women do not have it, though, because they choose, for whatever reason, no, no judgment, but they choose not to have it. So therefore, there are women out there who are barren who have never had children. I had a sister. I love her. She, she actually raised us. Mom worked three jobs, and my sister Susan, who at the time was like here and just mean and big and monstrous to me when I was little, now she's way down here. And I look at her and I say, I cannot believe I was ever scared of you. She is so tiny. But she did tell me, she said, I'll still whoop you. She calls me her big, little, her big little brother. I call her my little big sister. And I love her. But she had problem having children for a long, 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 long time. And she prayed and prayed and prayed. And they ended up adopting some children. Adopting some orphans. And then, lo and behold, God blessed her with one child. But this is what I want to talk about. There are women out there who do not and cannot have children for whatever reason. But there is a special blessing for you. There is a special blessing for you. Because there are hundreds of thousands of children out there who do not have a godly mother. And who need a godly mother. And this is the role that God has given you to fulfill that void in mankind. To be that godly person that these children can come to. There are hundreds and thousands of orphans out there who do not have a mother or do not have a godly mother. And they need, <coughs> they need someone to fulfill that role. And ladies, those who have not been able to have children, this is your blessing. To be able to fulfill that role. That special role. God doesn't give that role to everybody. He only gives it to the ladies that he can truly trust. So many women consider, well, I'm not blessed because I can't have children. Ladies, there's thousands of children that are waiting, you, waiting on you to, to, to reach out to them. Thousands of children. God has called on you to be blessed with his plan of you being the mother of many. 
not only those who are orphaned, but also those who are in need of a godly mom in their lives. For it is easy to make a baby. It is easy to make a baby. But it takes a special woman to be a mother to many and all those who are without a mother. Mary, unknowing the future, her future, which could, in, in many areas, have meant death, she trusted the Lord. She was a 13-year-old found to be pregnant, betrothed to Joseph. Under that culture at the time, if somebody would have found out that she was pregnant, most likely she would have been stoned to death. Many times, many times, being with Jesus and following Jesus, being around Jesus, she could have suffered death from all the people who came against him. But she stood by his side throughout his entire life. She put her life behind God's plan in order to fulfill, to fulfill and be submissive to the mission of Jesus. So today we honor and glorify mothers for their commitment and sacrifice to the giving of life. And we give God all the praise and all the glory for the gifts which is our moms. Happy Mother's Day. We are all given... We give God, we give God the glory. But if it wasn't for you moms and your willingness to sacrifice, is there a mom in here who has not sacrificed? If there is, man, I tell you, y'all go through, we put you through hell. But you still love us. It's kind of like God. You think we don't disappoint God from time to time? Sure we do. But does God quit loving us? Never. Never. So we have to realize God has blessed you ladies with a blessing of giving life itself. It may not be through your loins, if you will, at all times. But those who are dead in spirit, those who are dead in their heart, dead in their souls, you're here to give them life. You can do that if you choose to do that. There's a lot of moms out there who don't understand. There's a lot of moms out there who just can't do what God needs them to do for whatever reason. And again, there's no judgment. There's no judgment whatsoever. But when you come to realize, whether you've ever given birth or not, when you come to realize the blessings that God has for you in creating life in a dead soul, in a dead spirit, how can you say you're not blessed? If there's anyone here today who has not received Christ as Lord and Savior, then you won't understand. You will not conceive the plan of God. God does not pour out his plans on those who do not trust him. But when you come to a point in life to where you know, you know that you know that you know that you can trust him with all things, because with him, all things are possible. And so if you just put your trust and faith in him, he will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. Let's pray. Father God, if there's anyone here today who does not, who does not know you, Lord, not know of you, but know you, 
I pray, Lord, that you would touch their soul, touch their heart, bring them unto you so that you can bless them, so that you can love them, so that you can be with them, guide them, and direct them from this day forward so that they can glorify you with their lives. If that's you today and you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's so very simple to do so. It is hard to live the life. Mary had a tough life, watching her son struggle and go through, through so many, so, so much persecution and so much hatred when he was here to save the world. But she stuck by her son, and she trusted God, and she continued her work which is to glorify God with their life. If that's you today and you've not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's very simple to do so. Just say, Dear Jesus, but mean it in your heart. Dear Jesus, I pray, Lord, that you will forgive me of my sins. I trust your word says that if I ask, I will be forgiven. So I thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for the forgiveness. I thank you for the love that you bestow upon me. Father, I ask you to come into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. To take my life and do as you please in order to glorify your Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you all. All right. If anybody needs prayer, let's come on up and let us pray for you. We will pray for you and uh, with you. We know that God does all the healing. God is the mighty healer. We just stand in, amen, in agreement. All right. Excuse me a second. I need a wet one more. Happy Mother's Day, Lori. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, Carolyn. <laughs> Her, you. Carolyn. <laughs> and every other mom out here. I'm sorry. Amen. Okay, you too. Happy Mother's Day, Linda. All right, who else can we bless? Happy Mother's Day, Edie. Okay. Chris? I mean, Chris? Mike? Chris? All right, everybody's blessed. All right. We don't, we don't do like they do in the, uh, the, in the other church where they sprinkle every. Oh, <laughs> I thought she was going to hit me. But, but believe me, God's blessings flow to those who believe. All you have to do is receive it. Now, we anoint with oil. We lay hands on the sick because that's what the Word tells us to do. So we do it in obedience and ask God to heal. And so that's why we pray for healing. We're not, we don't do anything except a come into agreement and believe that God is going to act in whatever we pray for. That's what we do, okay? And have faith. It is faith. It's all faith. Yes, ma'am. All right, y'all were up here first. So... The normal? Continue to <laughs> okay, amen. Going amen, amen, amen. Father God, we lift up Chris and Lori to you, Lord, and we do thank you for the miracle that they are. We thank you for the miracles that you have performed in their lives, Lord. We ask you to continue doing so. There's healing that needs to come over both of them. They've got a long way to go, evidently, because it's coming very, it seems to be coming very slowly. But, of course, you're not limited by time, space, or matter. So we know, Lord, that you will, at the right time, this will all be passed, and, in, and it'll be over with, Father. But we ask you to continue strengthening them and healing them so that they may continue their walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, you came up next. Yeah? God's got it. Ooh, I like that. You better believe it. Well, well, let's pray for you anyway. Come on up here, William. All right, let's anoint you too, buddy. Okay? All right? Okay. Oh, sorry, Mike. All right, let's lay hands. All right. Father God, again, we lift up Carolyn to you, Lord. We ask that I know she has a lot of issues, uh, medical issues and things like that that she's been dealing with for quite some time and I know she doesn't worry about it because she knows that you've got it but Lord I just ask you to continue strengthening her and helping her through all of these uh, uh, issues that are uh, 
in, that are in her life. Father, I also lift up William to you, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you intercede in his, in his thinking, in his mind, in his soul, in his spirit, Lord, and help him continue growing in you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, Linda, okay, hang on, buddy. Linda's next. <laughs> well then, then go to the end of the line. <laughs> I got a bunch. My grand, my daughter-in-law just had surgery. Sam just had surgery. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we're gonna yeah. cover them all. Okay. We're gonna cover all them. All right, Father God, we lift up all things that are in Linda's life, Lord, that need your attention. Father, we ask for healing over Sam. We ask for healing over her sister. I think it was, and over her. And uh, we know that she is have uh, she's having back issues. So, Father, we ask that you heal her back. We heal Sam's uh, feet. I think it's due to diabetes and such. Yes. So, Father, I ask you to eradicate that diabetes out of his life. Keep his blood sugar the way it's supposed to be, and uh, no more problems with uh, in need of surgeries. Okay. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can call on you. And your word says to come to the elders of the church, be anointed with the oil, have hands laid on, and it shall be done. So, Father, we are asking you by, and standing on your word and believing by faith that it will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. You bet. All right, Crystal, come on. Edie, you have something we need to pray on in particular? Okay. All right, <laughs> Crystal. Let's, better, but I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not as bad as I once was. Amen. Absolutely. Father God, we lift up Crystal to you, Lord, and we're going to continue believing that you're going to cause a miraculous miracle happening in her life and that she is going to be washed clear of any and all this disease that has been trying to ravage her body. Father, we lift, you up, lift her up to you, Lord, and we ask that you put your healing hands over her and heal her body, wash it all out of her body in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Crystal. Hey, Bobby. Oh, two bobbies. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're listening. Knowing it here. Okay. Right there. All right. So, Father God, we lift up Bobby to you, Lord. Uh, the big Bobby to you. Bobby Gorman to you. And we ask, Lord, that you heal whatever's going on in your back. If it's uh, muscle, we ask that it be relaxed and returned as normal. If it's uh, nerves, Father, we ask that uh, any discomfort, uh, any pinching of those nerves be released, be relaxed so that she doesn't have any more pain in her back, Lord. We lift her up to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Tater Tot, let's pray for you, buddy. Uh, you want to pray for your daddy? Is that what it is? All right. Well, we've anointed you with oil also, just like the Word says. Father, we lift up Bobby, Bobby to you here, Lord, and he's, he's standing in again for his dad. He wants his dad to be healed, uh, both physically, spiritually, emotionally, etc. Uh, so, Father, we lift up him and his dad to you, Lord, and we ask that healing come over his body. Lord, we know that you are the one who does the healing. We're just coming in agreement and standing in agreement. So, Father, we ask it in Jesus' name that the healing happen right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Margo? Okay. All right. Yeah, we're standing for Margo and Deborah, okay? Well, I know you're under there somewhere. All right. Thank you, Colleen. Yes, Colleen, uh, uh, Lord, we, uh, we, th we thank Colleen that she is standing in for Margo, and we're going to add Deborah to the list, too. They both need healing on the things that they're going through, Lord. We ask also, Lord, that this, uh, any kind of accidents never happen again. Uh, just watch us and help us uh, head it off at the pass so that no one ever goes through this trauma again. But, Father, we ask that the healing come over Margo's head that uh, those staples are removed and uh, everything is fine and she can return to us very shortly. Father, we lift her up to you. We ask to be done in Jesus' name. And also with Deborah, we ask, Lord, that uh, you guide and direct her to receive the kind of care that she needs in order to take care of her issues. We lift her up to you, Lord, and ask healing be done in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, all right. Good deal.